Good morning, afternoon, evening, uh, whenever you're watching this. This is the sixth Sunday in Lent, and once again, we're not together, nor are we even in our building. Uh, I'll tell you, I'm in the basement of uh, where Christy and the family and I live. This is a different way to do worship. It's not what we're used to. It's uncomfortable. It's unfamiliar to all of us. So I ask you to lean into this experience. Make this your prayer space. Light a candle. Find some quiet. Feel free to pray along with us. This is the service of morning prayer as found in your prayer book. Um, hopefully you have a prayer book at home. If not, if you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, if you look below the video, there's a link um, where you can read along with us. And I'll call out the page numbers as we go along. Um, this is our worship in this time of Corona, and I uh, welcome you. I look forward to seeing you again, but I'm glad that we can share this somewhat collective experience together. But this morning, our service of morning prayer starts on page 76 in your Book of Common Prayer. Page 76 with the Lenten opening. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Turning to page 79, let us say the confession together on the bottom of the page. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Our first hymn is number 150, if you have a hymn in your home. Even if you don't, it's still 150. Continuing on page 80, Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Turning the page to 82, let us say the Venite together. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth, 
and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and you will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I have been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and the flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he had commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, O oh, bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you back from your graves. O oh, my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and will act, says the Lord. Here ends the reading. Continuing on page 86, we'll say Canticle 10, the second song of Isaiah. If we were together, we would read this antiphonally. I would read up to the asterisk and you would continue. Feel free to read along at home or come in after the asterisk. I'll read it all out loud. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Here ends the reading. Now turning to page 93, let us read Canticle 17, the Song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and to the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after her having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. While Mary stayed at home, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. 
Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they went, they followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone was laying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took far away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face unwrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. This passage of scripture is beautiful, well-known, and beloved. The story of Jesus' compassion and empathy for Mary and Martha and the loss of their brother Lazarus and the resurrection that take place is central to our fundamental belief in who Jesus and therefore God is. But I hope you forgive me that this morning, in the midst of all of this, I'm not quite at the resurrection yet. There's a lot in this gospel reading that is a foretaste for what we are to experience on our own Easter journey. The empty tomb, the rising of the dead, even Mary and Martha traveling to the tomb uh, is reminiscent of Mary, the mother of Jesus, traveling to the tomb on Easter morning to find it empty. At the end of John's gospel, uh, God's work and the Holy Spirit are clearly moving uh, and are worth rejoicing. That's not where I am. I'm kind of stuck in the beginning of the text. I'm stuck at that moment where Lazarus is ill and Jesus catches word. Mary and Martha want Jesus to come, and Jesus hears and then stays for two more days before he leaves. That's where I find myself at this point. I'm stuck in the days where Jesus hasn't yet showed up. Because in the midst of the confusion and the chaos and the surreal moment that is now, I think one wouldn't be blamed if they felt maybe absent, if they found themselves in prayer saying, 
God, I know you're there somewhere, but right now I just don't know where. As the death toll from this virus continues to grow, as the emotional uh, strain of isolation continues to mount, as many people that we know and love find themselves in financial hardships, um, what makes this time uncomfortable and painful and maybe unbearable um, is not subtle. And nor are our prayers. There's a deep history of prayer within the Psalms, the Lamentations. We don't pray them on Sunday mornings because Sunday is a time of worship. Um, but now, more than ever, I think not only are they relevant, but they're allowed. It's okay if in your prayer time you find yourself crying out to God, God, what the heck is going on? It's okay if in your prayer time, in your meditation, in your time alone, you ask yourself or God, where are you? What are you doing in this moment? It's okay if that's where you find yourself. I think it's okay to name it and it's okay to be there. We're removed in this tender spiritual time from our building, from our community. There's a biblical word for moments like this. It's exile. We are in a deep history and tradition of believers who find themselves in exile. Rarely in scripture are the protagonists in a place that they find comforting. The Jews in the Old Testament, the Christians after Jesus' death, were rarely home in the Bible. We are people of exile. We are people whose tradition allows us to know that even when we feel displaced, God is with us. That's why we are here this morning and not at church. That's why it's okay to name this moment exile, uncomfortable, absent. It's okay to put titles like that on this time because we're people who are Easter people. Even though personally and spiritually I'm not quite where the end of this gospel is, it is there. We have been promised resurrection. And whatever that may look like, whatever that may feel like days, weeks, months from now, I don't know. Whether we're able to say this was worth it in the end, I don't know. But I do know that in our faith, God is still here. I know that I still have the faith that when I crawl out, even in my anger or frustration or my doubt, that God is still listening. That even though Jesus was absent in those days between when Lazarus fell ill and died, he was still present. Something was still happening. That's the faith that we have. So in this time of silence or absence or exile, where we allow ourselves the chance to lament, to cry, to question, we also give ourselves the reminder that we are people of faith. That is our faith what continues to gather us. It's our faith that even though the church building is closed, puts us behind our computer screens to find new ways of community, prayer, formation. It's our faith that tells us that even though the church building doors are closed, St. Peter's, the Church of God, the body of Christ is still alive and moving in our community and in your life and in mine. So we travel now together apart in our exile, giving us the time and space to mourn, to doubt, to anger, to cry, but also the time and chance to lift one another up and to allow ourselves the reminder that even though we may question, God is here. 
God's love still abounds in this community, door open or door closed. And just like the sisters in the empty tomb on that moment, Jesus will cry, Lazarus, church, come out. And we will see what God is up to, even in these days. Amen. Our service continues with the Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our next hymn is number 508. Continuing on page 97. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Continuing with suffrage A on the bottom of the page. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Continuing with the colics. Almighty God, you can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise. That among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessings through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of this earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holding those in our parish prayer list in prayer this week. Raymond, Patricia, John, Gay, Kathy, Diane, Cara, Connor, Deanie, Penny, Karen, Kurt, Mary, Grace, Lorette, Anna, Sandy, Rich, Oliver, Patricia, Anne, Peg, Bev, Dawn, Peter, Jim, Lori, Denny, Joan, Nancy, Suzanne, Jerry, Tiffany, Sharon, Judy, Jane, Peppy, Michael, Sarah, Phil, Nancy, and Joan. And all those on your hearts and minds this week, particularly those living in fear of an undiagnosed illness, those left unemployed or underemployed due to the quarantine, or are themselves suffering with COVID-19, we pray. And our last hymn is number 635. Turning to page 102, let us say together the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make your common supplication to you. And you have promised through your beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with those you love now and always. Amen. 
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. See you soon.